Hello, good afternoon. Well, thank you for coming to this session, one of the last sessions in this so interesting Congress, in this amazing Congress. I hope that you have enjoyed a lot these three days. I think we have had a very interesting sessions with a lot of food for thought for everyone. And we had also very interesting side events, such as the one that we had on, on Tuesday. We had a side event on Latin American cities and public-private partnerships that I hope that you attend. Well, anyway, as you, as you may know, the title of the session, of today's session, it's Creating Shared Value Through Innovative Collaboration and Partnerships. That's a very wide title that enables us to talk about a lot of things. But let's try to focus a little bit. And when, when I was starting to, to think about this session, I was, well, the first thing I did is to look what we, what it is about when we talk about shared value. And, and Michael Porter, the, the guy, you know, I guess that you all know Michael Porter. <laughs> Michael Porter, when he invented the concept of, of, of shared value, basically what he said is about linking profits with the health, the, the quality of life of communities. And this concept, I think it's very interesting, and, but, but this concept is six years old. And in a liquid society, in a digital society like ours, uh, maybe six years is a lot of time. So I thought, do we still need shared value? So, so I went to the library and I looked a little bit and I saw there's a new, a new book from Ivan Krastev, an intellectual from, from Bulgaria. The name of the book is After Europe. And Mr. Krastev, he just thinks about the future of Europe, about the future of European Union, and he tries to find, he sees that there's a risk of, of rupture, of, 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 of lack of future for the European Union. And one of the reasons, he says that there's this, this risk of lack of future is because voters, there's a voters' rebellion against meritocratic elites. So people, common people, is not more trusting its elites. It's not more trusting the guys, the women that are running our organization, our administrations, our companies. So maybe, maybe one of the reasons why people are not trusting anymore our elites is because maybe these companies that they are running, they're not working to create shared value. So I think that shared value is a very interesting thing that we still need. And from our center, because I work in a, a center, a research center called the Specialist Center on PPPs in Smart and Sustainable Cities from IST Business School and, and part of the International Center of Excellence at the United Nations. What we, what we do in our research, what we have seen, is that we need PPPs that create value. So today we're going to talk about that. And to, to talk about that, we have several speakers that will present the tools they're using, the projects they're using to create value. So let me please introduce you a little bit our speakers and then I will give them the floor. First, we have Mr. Ofir Paspines. He's the founder of the Institute of, for Local Government in Tel Aviv University. He was Israel Minister of the Interior and of Science, Culture and Sport. And as Chairman of the Interior and Environment Committee, he was responsible for issues such as local government and environmental protection. We also have with us Mr. Mika Rantakoko. He's the CEO of Six Cities Strategy. It's a platform of the six biggest cities um, in, fi in Finland, and he's also the coordinator of European Urban Age Agenda on Digital Transition Partnership. Then we will have Mr. Tony Crisoli. He's the project leader in, of Smart City Education Initiative at the Frederick Newman Foundation for Freedom. And he will explain us this project of Smart City Education Initiative. And finally, we have a shared presentation. We will give you a little bit more time to Roberto, Mr. Roberto Sanchez, General Director of Innovation and City Promotion at the City Council in Madrid, and Mr. Ricardo Lopez de Aro, 
Director of Local Administration in Ferrovial Services, that will explain a partner project that is really creating shared value. So, Mr. Parfines, you have the floor. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are talking about uh, values. It's smart city. It's not. Uh, it's not something that you. Uh, that it's something that we have to think about it because it's a new thing. It's, uh, we are talking about values. Values during a, a, a revolution that we are having, a digital revolution, and it's interesting. I will try to look at it from the perspective of. Uh, I'm a teacher for for for, for public management and for local government and urbanism. So I will look at it from that point of view, not from the IT point of view, not from the entrepreneurs, but from the academic from the, uh, and from the authorities. Okay. So of course the number one value that we have is our privacy. Our privacy is, uh, is a threat at this revolution. We know that when we are having all these applications, all this, using all this big data, we are exposing our privacy in a severe way. Um, I, will try to, uh, I will try to tell you something from my experience. I'm going to show you a presentation, but it's not that important to you, the presentation, because I'm talking about a pilot project or a big project that we are having in Tel Aviv, but it's only for me to, uh, to, 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 uh, to have an example in order to share with you my thoughts about values, okay? So uh, Israel, you know, some numbers, you can, you can look at the numbers yourself, small country, eight million pe people, uh, uh, you can see, uh, you can see the, the figures yourself. It's a startup nation, we like people to call us startup nation, and for us it was very uh, naturally that we thought about smart city and not only about uh, conventional high tech, and startups, okay? So for us, smart city was uh, immediately a big challenge for our entrepreneurs, for our young uh, uh, engineers, and they went all over the place to, uh, to develop new, uh, new, new, new things. And, and you know, the field is, uh, is uh, we have a lots of, uh, lots of uh, new uh, patterns and, uh, and ideas. Um, uh, Tel Aviv, you know Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv municipality is a, is a great city, we used to call it the city that never stops. Uh, uh, the city likes to have uh, hubs and they like to be, uh, they like to attract uh, new entrepreneurs from all over the world. This is something that we see as a very high priority to Tel Aviv municipality, to Tel Aviv mayor, to all the people that are involved. Tel Aviv University, as I told you before, is one of the biggest, is, is the biggest, actually is the biggest university in Israel, very known for its uh, innovation. We are number nine in the world in innovation, number nine in the world. The university itself is over the 100, but in innovation, we are number nine in the world. That means also a lot. So, uh, so we had uh, this, uh, this vision in Atidim. Atidim is a private company it's a private company that, uh, that earn, that uh, her st her, uh, her stockholders are the Tel Aviv municipality 50% and Tel Aviv University 50%. So uh, Atidim Director General, which is a nice guy that, I'm not sure that he's here, but he's in the conference. He had a vision to, to make in Atidim, that's in Tel Aviv, a hub, a, a huge lab for smart city we have the uh, big data of Tel Aviv, uh, Tel Aviv uh, uh, municipality. Uh, we have the, the place to make all the experiments. Tel Aviv University brings all the knowledge, all the PhD people, P PhD students, and so on and so forth. So it sounds great, but then I have to say stop. <laughs> I said stop because I'm telling you why. Listen, I said something is missing. Something is missing. What is missing? I didn't know to put the finger on, and then I realized. We don't have any connection with the Israeli government. I mean, on one hand, we didn't need any money. We had enough money between the university and the municipality. We didn't need any governmental money. 
You don't have to be jealous, but that's, that's, that's how it was. But still something was missing. And I said to myself, what is missing? And then we realized. We realized that there is a disparities between, between the, 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 the local authorities in Israel, between the center and the periphery. And we decided at that moment that we are not going to build this lab only for us. We are not going to build this lab only for Tel Aviv. We are going to share this lab with all the 257 municipalities in Israel. Because that's what we have to do. Because there are municipalities that don't have the money to do that by themselves. There are municipalities that don't have the money to, to, to build the infrastructure and to bring all these, those, and to buy all those applications and so on and so forth. So we decided that this thing is going to, sh to, to, to sh we are going to share it with everyone and it's going to, to, uh, to, to, to do everything to everyone. So that's why we needed the government. Because the government took upon itself to subsidize, to subsidize not the lab, because we didn't need the money, but to subsidize all the other municipalities, cities in Israel that will need or will have the opportunity to use the applications that we are going to develop in that lab. That was the idea. Okay, that's nice, but that's, by the way, this is the minister. By the way, she was here, she gave a presentation on the first day, and we are in collaboration with her and with her staff that called Israel Digital. Anyway, but that was nice, and they let us also uh, to, to establish the Israeli uh, digital community of Israel, which is also a, a very interesting challenge, also across the state of Israel, not only Tel Aviv. So, so my, my thought is, first of all, listen, we have to collaborate. We have to work together. If we will work together, we will be much more efficient. We will reach everyone. We will, not we will not leave people behind. We will shorten the time to market for project. We will be more efficient, as I said, and, and I believe that collaboration is, is a very important value when we are dealing with smart city. Now, in addition to that, we had, uh, I, I had another two th thoughts that I want to share with you. The first thought is about uh, what, wh where are we going from here? If you are talking, if you are taking collaboration a step further, I'm starting to think not in terms of city of smart city, but in terms of smart cities. Not smart city, but smart cities. I want to work together. Listen, Israel is only 8 million people, 257 municipalities. Actually, it's a one big city. If I compare it to cities in China, uh, India, New Mex Mexico, Amer United States. So, and of course, there is the regional uh, aspect as well. So I'm, th I'm saying to myself, let's work together. Let's work, let's try to have our technology serving not only one big city or several big cities, but let's try to, to, to think in, in a way that cities are working together, developing a technology together, and so on and so forth. This is for me? You're kidding me. So last sentence. I have to be on time. Um, the, the, the last thought that I want to share with you, because I don't have enough time, but that's the rules of the game. It's OK. You know, in smart cities, we are, we are working all the time, bottom up, bottom up, because we are depending on the entrepreneurs. We have to start thinking of working top down. We have to start thinking of working top down. It means that first of all, we at the, in the municipality will have a plan. We will, dis, we will decide for ourselves which services we actually need and then look for it in the, in the business, and not the other way around. The, until now, the entrepreneurs inventing all kinds of different applications, and they try to sell it to us, to the municipalities. Let's try and think also differently. Let's try to see what we really need for our habitants, for our citizens, and then ask the market to develop it for us, for our use. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, I have uh, had the pleasure to be involved in setting up our six biggest uh, cities collaboration in the field of innovation in Finland. Since that, uh, I've been now moved into European context, working with the digitalization uh, of European cities, but I have had luck to continue to be involved in this work. As our previous speaker emphasized a lot, collaboration is indeed a central value which we are also sharing among our cities. Our cities, cities of from the Helsinki, Banta, Espo, consisting creating the capital area of Finland, and then Oulu, Turku, and Tampere from around the rest of the Finland. Together, we are one, uh, I could say, we are a city. And I would say, together, we are more than alone. And this collaboration is, in that sense, essential point for how we can support and develop our cities. And uh, especially in this context, I will be telling you about how we are developing innovation. So also in that sense, this critical mass which we are creating together is indeed at the center of all our thinking. Together, we are having the possibilities of being better and smarter. All alone, we would just be tackling some challenges which are costly and also something which are going forward, no matter what we do. And in that context, uh, collaboration helps quite a lot. And this collaboration is also something which is uh, related to our companies. Our companies working with single cities, they have difficulties to find enough places to develop new activities, uh, new innovations. But together, our six cities can make the things happen better so that our companies are then better prepared going into the global smart city markets. Our cities together, we are talking about world's largest open innovation platform. We're talking about one third of Finnish population. We're talking about 40% of total company revenues from Finland. We're talking about almost two thirds of Finnish GDP. And we're talking about three fourths of Finland's research, development, and innovation infrastructure. As you perhaps know, Finland is a country of innovation and ICT, and these cities are really the driving forces in this context. And the collaboration is the way we try to take our role in related, related to innovation into next level. In this context, our six cities have been collecting the innovation platforms from our respective cities into one place. As we have been discussing with uh, single companies that, uh, well, why don't you use our platforms? And they've been saying like, what platforms? The challenge there is that we need to disseminate, we need to spread the word what we are doing. And our solution for this is to create a portal where all the companies who would like to come and test their activities can be found from one place. And there we have now tens of open innovation platforms up and running and ready to be used by our companies. And that's also creating the critical mass so that we are now work collaborating with hundreds of companies from startups to international companies as well. The, it is the portal I've been talking, it is a nationwide one-stop service where innovation development and solution validation can happen in real city context with real users, with real citizens, and also in collaboration with cities. So it is not just testing and piloting, but also finding potential customers from 
city networks. We have the platform, various platforms there where you can get concrete examples of up and running innovation platforms. These platforms are not wannabe platforms. The one and only uh, criteria for getting in to this network was that platforms really exist and the companies can really get concrete support and concrete possibilities to test and develop their act activities. There's information about the platform and then some more information about what kind of possibilities there are. And then it is only a matter of the company to contact the person who is responsible for each innovation platform. Another level of collaboration is then uh, this one, uh, the European context where I'm now personally working more. We are talking about digitalization, which is an essential part of the smart city development. And it is an essential part for better services and growth for Europe. And this digital transition partnership, which is a European effort consisting of 20 partners around Europe, is focusing on providing better services to urban citizens and also creating high growth business opportunities for our European companies. The idea is that we are creating platform possibilities from European context related to digital single market and how we really can support the business development in our European context. All in all, I would say the cooperation is the tool for mutual benefit, no matter what it, where it happens and it, in which level it happens. For example, as being here now in Barcelona, I think uh, this has been a very good example of seeing how cities are, and companies are looking forward to the collaboration. For cities, this collaboration means learning from each other. We don't have to do the same mistakes, all our cities. We can even learn from the best practices. We have possibility, with help of collaboration, to get tools to develop our services. We have also possibility to get new tools for supporting innovation in the European context and even further, further. And for businesses, we are looking for this collaboration to really help companies to success. We have the possibility to create critical mass so that companies can access versatile test markets to really prepare themselves for the global growth. Also, companies can get uh, direct input from our collaboration and the citizens in our networks so that they do right things when they develop their products. And also, not least, companies would get references from our smart cities, which can be also regarded as quite interesting when talking about selling the products. If you would uh, like to get some more information about our activities, please visit citybusiness.fi portal where you can find information about Six City Collaboration and all these platforms which are available from our cities. And of course, we are also there in Nordic Pavilion, which by the way is one good example of good collaboration where we have all the Nordic countries present but also our six city network present. We are more than happy to give you there more information and uh, looking forward to collaborate with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. Thank you, Mika. Now we have Tony Crisoli that will spring the Smart City Edu Education Initiative at the Frederick Noman Foundation for Freedom. Thank you so much. I would like to invest my eight minutes into a small confession I must really admit, I love being at a conference like this. Uh, it's refreshing because everybody shares the same vision, has a similar enthusiasm, and we all speak the same language. And this is not broken English. We e understand each other why we have to work together and collaborate to build smarter, better cities for our citizens. Unfortunately, reality will kick in for me tomorrow when I get back home. Home for me is Belgrade for the last 20 years. It's in Serbia, a wonderful country with wonderful people with incredible problems. And this is where my story starts to shift maybe from yours, but maybe not. 
citizens in my region really do, don't want to be empowered as we preach it here. Because with responsibility, with empowerment comes responsibility, right? So you can't be just sitting there. You, you're doing something and you're, you, are, you have to take the responsibility for this. Um, politicians, they don't like change, right? Because change is not good. And I'm not really sure how many politicians in my region really want to bet their political career on something that is based on IoT, platforms, standards, smart cities. And I don't even want to open the bottle about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial spirit, and the condition young entrepreneurs have to work in, in my region. So we have heard from various speakers here, from Mr. Kozny, for instance, several times, to create smart cities. We need disruptive entrepreneurs. We need people who want to change the city with their bright ideas. We need citizens who want to have an active role. And we need brave politicians which, with their career, with their visions, change the environment we're living in. And this is a reality which is not in my country. So what have we done? I'm coming from an organization that works in 60 countries all over the world. And for 50, 60 years, we are working with stakeholders all over the world. We're educating them. This is what we do best. And in many of the countries, we work with the local level. We work with politicians, decision makers, institutions, startups, entrepreneurs, individuals. And the sharpest toolbox, in our opinion, is education. It is collaboration and is exchange and matchmaking. This is what we have to do. This is what we have to guarantee exists in order to create smarter cities. So in 2013, we have founded something that we call the Smart City Education Initiative, or called SAI. It's an umbrella network of various organizations, all of them already working in the field of smart city development, but are dedicated to the mission of spreading education, using education to create what we have called here a critical mass among stakeholders, but also among citizens. Those are, of course, political parties, institutions, development agency, international and national. They are startups, they are companies, they are individual, they are academia. And the Naman Foundation is only the manager behind all this. We couldn't do any of what we're doing here without all these partners, and there are many of them in the Western Balkans already working. So let me give you a few examples of what we are doing. Many of the things you will see here are self-explanatory. Many of the things you will see here is something that maybe you are doing, but maybe some of the things are not that common. Of course, our core business education, we educate various target groups here. We start with the youngest. We have kids here as well because I'm the father of two daughters believe that educating my children is really important in creating a future critical mass which will guarantee citizens who understand what we are doing. But then we go up, we work with students as well, we work with young entrepreneurs, we work with uh, political parties, we work with people coming from institutions. And this is really important that we educate such people because they're, in the end, the ones who have to push through all those initiatives. And if they don't understand why all, all, all of those things are beneficial for them and necessary, uh, we will have a hard time preaching standards and protocols in cities. Another thing I like to do is matchmaking, or we like to do is matchmaking. What is matchmaking? Well, we have heard so often that we can't do things our, ourselves. So it's very understandable. You have decision makers on one side, then you have entrepreneurs, then you have development agencies. And what we are doing is through many, many kinds of educational programs, initiatives, is we bring them into one room, we lock them there, uh, they get a, a joint task, a common task, and they try to work together on a solution. And very often you will see that decision makers on local level, the people with the mandate, the people which actually sign all the initiatives, very often have very good ideas, but more often they don't know which is the last step to get this project running. And we bring them together with, let's say, a development agency like the GIZ in this, uh, in this example, because they can really help them do the next necessary step. Another thing that I really love to do is uh, working with startups working with young, young entrepreneurs. And one of the more, more amazing projects we're doing is a Smart City Challenges, 
we team up with cities, in this case it's the Belgrade uh, capital. Uh, we bring together people from the, uh, from the business, in this case it was a big telecommunication company, some investors, uh, an ICT hub, and we bring in a lot of young people with great ideas. We tell them Belgrade has a problem, solve it for us. Those guys then enter a, men uh, a mentorship program for several months. The winners will be selected, they get money, uh, winning money, they will travel to Tel Aviv for several weeks to exchange with the startup scene over there and they will get hopefully investment from one of the VCs. This year the winners will receive not money but Bitcoin or Dash in this case. One project we're really proud of is the Smart City Education Festival. This is one of our um, paper child um, projects. We really tr w want the smart city topic to be something that's seen in and it is visible in broader public. So we have done an international uh, big conference in several locations in Belgrade and we have lots of partners being there. We had more than 25 partners and organizations teaming up in Belgrade to make this festival uh, happening. Of course, another thing we have to do is we have to boost awareness. And we do it with children, but we also do it with citizens. And you can use various tools to do so. We use virals, animation movies, we use things like publications and social media and all kinds of tools you have at your disposal to spread the message why we have to collaborate, why smart city is not something that will cost you uh, jobs but will create jobs in the future. Another thing we are doing, and this is, the, this is actually for me how we should use technology, we are building a platform which will unify everything that's happening in the field of smart cities development in the region. All the initi initiatives that exist will be there and it will be searchable. So a decision maker, a mayor, or whatever kind of politician says, I want to learn more about smart lightning, they can get there and they can learn which city has done it already, which are companies have developed it, who are the experts, what are the experiences, and who can I ask, who can I ask for the next step I want to do. And all of this, again, will be free of charge. If you want to learn more about what we are doing in the Western Balkans and in Eastern Europe, here you have some context. Thank you for mu very much for your attention. Thank you, Tony. So now it will be the turn of Mr. Roberto Sanchez, the General Director of Innovation and City Promotion in the City Council of, of Madrid. OK. And so they will share. The, it will be a, an innovative presentation, sharing together. It will be public-private <coughs> partnership on real time. So please, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, well, uh, thank you, good, good afternoon. Um, thank you for um, allowing us to share our vision and uh, our, our project. First, one little th thing about Madrid uh, and how we see the, the uh, sharing uh, and how we see the public-private collaboration. In Madrid, we have created uh, something which we call the uh, Forum for, for Enterprises of Madrid, where we, where we um, share our vision and we, where we can um, um, uh, do new projects or, 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 or test ideas or, uh, with, uh, through, the, through these projects, uh, test these ideas in, in a relationship which is uh, apart from the standard contractual basis in which a city collaborates with the, with, the, with the companies that provide services into the, into the city or that prepare, prepare infrastructure. It's in the framework of this um, forum of companies that we have in Madrid where we develop this project together with Ferrovial Services, which is uh, the company in, in, in this case. So perhaps so it's this one. Uh, city Centric is an, an urban lab for innovation in street cleaning, so we decided to to go, f uh, uh, to, 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 to go on, on an investigation on, on how to improve the street cleaning based on, on, uh, on several things, uh, on three things basically. One is citizen involvement, or I would say better in engagement of the, of the citizens, data analytics, and, the, and, and new technologies as the main levers to improve the, to improve the, the cleaning of the streets. The idea was to understand uh, uh, from the citizens' perspective um, with, through interviews and through a close, co close contact with them uh, to identify the key issues that, uh, for improving the satisfaction, how, how, do, how do they 
perceive the cleanliness of the city and how they react, um, analyze internationally the best practices in the same, in the same area, and, uh, and then um, the application of new technologies that can help to improve, uh, to improve these, um, these uh, aspects, the cleaning. In total, the project uh, involves uh, 19 uh, months, uh, approximately, four areas of uh, Madrid City Council. Um, we analyzed seven, seven cities in, internationally. 33 people were involved in the project from the municipality or from, or from the company, Ferrovial. We, we, we did uh, 35 interviews with mun municipal um, managers to, to understand how, how it, it works uh, the, 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 the normal way. And then um, we, we, we got interviews, 100. We interviewed more than 90 citizens in the area. And, um, and um, we, we were uh, with um, 4 million of data, data collecting in that, uh, in that uh, sense. Um, to explain a little bit more. Sure, thank you. Um, well, first of all, uh, uh, before getting deeper into the project, uh, let me explain why this project City Centrica fits very well into what Ferrovial Servicios strategy and Ferrovial Servicios philosophy is. Um, we understand clearly that we have to change the current model of delivering the service. Uh, we are used to the traditional model that is uh, a public administration, contract, private company. Um, we know, we think, and we are very sure of that, that we are losing a lot of value just taking out some other potential partners in these projects. Um, I'm talking about um, the, the startups, for example, uh, talking about technological companies. Uh, we, as a service company, uh, we, we should try to do things the best, but we have not all the value in, self, in, in ourselves. So we think that we have to somehow to collaborate with, as my colleague have said before, to collaborate with other partners. Uh, we cannot be a startup, we cannot be a technological company, but we can work with them, we can share with them experiences, information, and we can include them in our contracts just to add more value to the, to the, to the council at, at the, and at the end to the um, citizens. Um, just to, well, very, very briefly, just to explain that we are, what we are trying to do is we are, going, we are trying to explain to change the service model and to try to do it somehow in a disruptive way and to find new models to do it. Uh, there are two ways of doing that, or do, two, two factors that should affect that. The first one is obvious, financial. Uh, the projects, we are a private company, so the projects should be financially interesting. Um, but not only that, we as Ferrovial, as a big company, uh, we understand that we cannot be driven only by those factors. Uh, there's a big problem that we understand, that we have, everybody knows it, that is the environmental problem that we have in the world. And uh, all our uh, projects now should be driven also, not by the, financi the, by the financials, but also by the, envi by the environmental problem. We have to solve it, we have to wait, we have to help to solve that problem. And for sure, I, I don't want to, to, to forget this one, uh, because that's for sure that that's something that has no discussion. We have to have always in the middle of our minds the safety, the health and safety. That's something that everyone has to roll about. Everything has to roll about this issue. Uh, that's something that, that is not in discussion. Safety of the workers and even of the citizens, if we can do something about that. Uh, well, let me check. Let me just get in specifically into the into the city centrica just a few comments because we have delivered many many uh, ways of doing things and we are driving some of them uh, let me give you just a few examples we have uh, we are working now with a two ways communication channel with the citizens uh, where the citizens are in contact in permanent contact with with us as a company uh, and not only about complaints, but of course there are, there are complaints, but you know, the citizens are, are, are they are a fund of good information. They also can make suggestions, information, comments, whatever. 
that helps us very much to improve our service. Uh, another example could be uh, this one. Uh, this is a, uh, a project, what we call Revive, uh, where uh, this, uh, this is a free mobile solution to exchange the use, the use of things that citizens could have. There are sometimes, we, we all do that, we have things at home that we don't need anymore. And what we do with that? We send it to the, to the bin, to the rubbish, and we forget it. Well, there are many things that are, if, if, they, are, if they are in shape good enough, that uh, could, other people could be interested in that. So what we've done, we've, we've created a platform in, in, in collaboration with the Council of Madrid, a platform where uh, the citizens can, can get into that app platform and can uh, put the things that are, could be interesting for others. Uh, it's interesting to, to, to see how this project is growing in just two, three months. Mm, a big number of people is getting into this project, is seeing what, what there is there, it's seeing what, what we have there, uh, and they are interested in doing things and, and buying, not buying, because it's not something you have to buy, just acquiring those things. Uh, by doing that, we are helping to solve somehow one of the big problems we have in the next few years, and this uh, the 2020 uh, uh, objective goal that we have in Europe about recycling things and reusing things. So that's a good example of how innovation uh, is helping us to, to include that. Uh, just get into the into the conclusions, Roberto. If you want to start with yes, them, just very 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 bri briefly. Um, well, in, in citizen Trica, what what we the the the, um, the results that we got was uh, new ways of communicating with the citizens with will uh, uh, allow us to have a better perception of the cleaning of the city, to engage the citizens in in the cleaning of the city, and that is important. As uh, Ricardo says, uh, we help also into the into the circular economy when we put in the cleaning in the cleaning areas of the municipality uh, spaces and a plan for that to exchange uh, use uh, material that can be used for others. We also tested some new technologies to go from from uh, from, uh, uh, from for cleaning the city. So, in general, in general, as as I say at the beginning. Uh, this project also shows, as, as others, that uh, this long-term public-private uh, uh, collaboration uh, leads to, to innovations and, 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 and investment, no? and, and are on, on benefit for, for both sides. And also, uh, the, the value of this is that uh, the value of this is that uh, is the value for the city, is the value for the citizens, not only for, for the for the companies or, the, or for the or for the city for the city hall, but it's, it's for the cities. Um, on that basis, we think that we need to evolve from this transactional uh, in, for the future. We need to, to think in, in evolving from these transactional relationships uh, that are the normal way in, in which we work companies and, and, and administrations, no? for to, uh, to uh, better understand in long-term relations, in um, uh, approach to the contracts in, in another way. That also will help in uh, in, um, in having more innovative uh, uh, innovative solutions, no? And, uh, and I think that that is um, basically the things probably you, you can. End. Yes. Well, uh, just because we are nearly running out of time, just very very quick, just to tell uh, that uh, the now that we have the big data analysis, the new technologies, we have to modify absolutely the way we are doing things. Or we are running the service. Um, we have to change from the classic uh, uh, input-driven contracts to the output-driven contracts. People, citizens, are not, in, are not interested in how many workers are, how many trucks are in the, in the street. The, what they want to have is the street in well conditions. Um, and just to finish with two important things that we've noticed, not really new, but, but, but well, it surprised us. Uh, the first thing that... Um, Collaborating with citizens is something really helpful. You know, uh, making them being proactive, not just reactive, but being proactive and helping us to do things. 
um, as, I, as I've mentioned before, just uh, saying suggestions, information that they, probably sometimes they have and we don't. So that helps a lot. And they are very happy in doing those things. We have a number, a group of 100 people that are working with us, citizens that are working with us, and they are being very, very proactive in doing things. Um, and, and not only that, but also just being, uh, making them, making the citizens being, uh, working with their perceptions. I mean, sometimes doing the same thing, they don't, if they don't notice that that work has been done, they don't care or they think it's ha it hasn't been done. So if we change things a little bit in order for them to see that the things have been done, they change their minds and they, 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 uh, they modify the, the way of, think, of seeing things. And the last one is uh, the same happens with the workers. We were a little bit struggled about how the workers will uh, assume these changes that we have been doing. Uh, the good thing is that they've been very proactive as well. Uh, they've been even working more than the usual day that they have been working even more time. So many good things of this project and uh, that we started one year ago, more or less. I think that's, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, Roberto. So now the audience has a question. Well, while, while you prepare your questions, because I know there's a lot of questions preparing in the audience, so I'll give you a little bit more of time. I have some questions here. The, the, the first one, and it's, and it's for all of you. So, so we have seen that cooperation between cities is a must to reach this creation of shared value, this creation of smart cities. We have the examples here in, in Tel Aviv, the examples in, in Finland, but, but these examples are, are not, this cooperation between cities is not so open. It's not so, so it's, it's kind of rare. And I, and I would like to, to ask you, why do you think this kind of cooperation between cities is so, is so, is so rare, is not so often? And if do you think that companies can be the ones that be the glue, the, the, the ones that link the, the, the project, the smart city project between cities. May I? Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, this is uh, my, my working, you hear me? For my opinion, it's because of uh, two major reasons. Number one, municipalities tend to work alone, at least in Israel. I mean, the, uh, the ability to, to collaborate, it's not so simple even according to the regulation. Because think of it. A city should should give services to its own to its own citizens, not to other cities citizens. It's it's almost against the law. If it if, although it's ridiculous, but that's but that's a fact. So that's one reason. By the way, inside of that, I would say the competition between cities is also nothing that is something that is not that healthy. Everyone to wants to show that he is better than the other, first faster than the other and so on and so forth. The second problem is the entrepreneurs themselves. You know, entrepreneuring is something very individual. You know, you don't collaborate with others. You, you have to, you, have, you know, you, you have a special mind. You think differently than the others. You have this passion. I mean, if you need to, to collaborate, it's basically because of money, but not because of other things. So those two reasons, makes it very rare, as you said, uh, to collaborate. That's why we need somebody, somebody like the, the big brother that will force them to work together or will tell them to work together or will bonus people or municipalities that are working together. Thank you. Indeed, cities compete with each other. That's a fact. As you questioned about uh, how, why it's so rare, it's uh, as simple as it is. The challenge is uh, not always so easy to tackle, but for example, in our case, it has been hard work to find the ways and find the topics where it makes sense to collaborate. 
and after we have been able to make sense that, then it's easy. And it doesn't uh, leave outside the competition, but in some of the topics, but collaboration happens there where it makes sense. So for example, in, in promotion of uh, innovations on uh, how to develop the open data and uh, new solutions for public services. For example, our cities are so small that uh, we really need this critical mass which helps to find the solutions, making, for example, our cities interesting for the companies to come and collaborate with us. Another story is then uh, that, uh, well, we can learn from each other. This collaboration is uh, also that that uh, we really are, uh, when we are open, we disseminate what we have been doing, then we just, we learn it from each other. And in that sense, it also makes it possible to collaborate even more. My answer would be, I think it's always beneficial. It, it has always been beneficial when cities cooperate. I mean, there's normally a good thing coming out from this. However, when you talk about the infrastructure and smart infrastructure today, the old not smart infrastructure, we're doing it for quite a few hundred of years. We know how to l lay down pipes. So this is something everybody has learned by now. However, when we talk now about smart infrastructure, protocols, standards, and everything that can be done, there's something that's incredibly fast developing. The smart cities term is being around only a couple of years. This conference is being organized only a couple of years. There was no need for cities to move and cooperate in such speed as it is today. So I think it has something also to do with the technology and with the uncertainty that exists for decision makers for a city when it comes to the technology itself. So I personally don't think that companies, the technologists themselves can be the glue. I think two mayors talking together is the best glue that there is. Um, very briefly, I think that um, we face a situation in which uh, cities play uh, cities play a new role in in the world. So, but we don't have the the infrastructure sort of or the organization uh, above to to helping us to play this new role. Even in the United Nations, we, there is no no such a thing. No, there is not an agency for cities, for example. Uh, or we have only own habitat, but it's a different it's a different thing. And in um, and, and this new role, is true, we all compete, but in the, the same that um, in the companies, there is a co a competition, for example, in the, telecom in the telecom industry, whilst at the same time there are areas for collaboration because it's absolutely ne necessary for, for research, development, um, standardization, whatever, as, as you, you have mentioned. I think that we in the cities need to find the, the, the areas for collaborations uh, um, and in, in this new role that the city plays in which uh, we compete with uh, one with each other, but at the same time we need to find these this areas in, in this new role in the world. Well, yes, uh, as a private company, um, I think it should be part of our responsibility, try to be, I don't know if blue, as you've mentioned, but facilitators, as we as a multinational company, be facilitators of different cities being in touch with each other just to understand and share uh, their information. Thank you. Thank you. And as we are just finishing, we just have one, one more minute. I will, I will briefly summarize some of the ideas that we, we, had, we heard today. For example, we heard that research without a link between and with the authorities and the society is almost useless. We also uh, have seen that collaboration is a very good value regarding smart cities and smart cities is about breaking silos inside municipalities but also between municipalities, between cities. We have to think about not only bottom-up projects but also from top-down projects using the strategy of the city to reach the smart city projects. We have also seen that to create shared value projects, we have to collaborate between cities, it is a must, and we still need to spread the word, the world, uh, explain what we do. We have seen that normally, that, and I really like this, this sentence, because normally we think that everybody wants to be empowered, 
and, 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 and Tony explained us that not sometimes everybody wants to see, be in power because they want, didn't want the responsibility. So we need to educate people because it's the foundation of progress. And this cooperation between the private and the, and the public sector in the local level, you can see that the local authorities can really lead projects, but sometimes they need a help to reach the last step. We also, from the private point of view, we see that, we saw that to create shared value, we need to work in a different way, <laughs> collaborating with all the partners. If we change things, citizens will change the way they think, and also our workers will understand that they have to do things quite different. And finally, long-term partnerships with citizens is basic to reach smart cities. Thank you all for being here today.